So here we are in Black Ops 4, probably one of the most anticipated zombies modes that Treyarch has ever created, but also probably one of the biggest failures that Treyarch has ever created. And that's for multiple reasons, but I thought if we're going to be talking about Black Ops 4, it only makes sense to start off here in Blood of the Dead, which was also probably one of the most anticipated maps of all time. I'm sure anyone who was around at the time probably remembers the reveal trailer for this map. It was very, very cool to say the least. I remember seeing that initial shot of all four characters' backs as they looked up towards the uh, prison, which we'll be exploring in just a while over that way. I remember not only seeing all the YouTubers and content creators who were at the big event for the reveal, getting extremely excited, but I also remember being extremely excited myself. I remember fangirling and being so excited to see my boys back in Alcatraz after the uh, somewhat controversial ending of Revelations. And so, you know, with a fan favorite map such as Mob of the Dead being remastered, plus a fan favorite cast, or the fan favorite cast being the original crew, or the premise crew, should I say, the sort of original, but not actually original crew. Yeah, I really do feel like they missed a mark here with Blood of the Dead, especially with just how excited everyone was for it. And I think there's a few reasons for that, which we can dive into as we kind of explore and play the map. But I will have to say, you know, after mucking around a little bit, getting these uh, recording settings ready and all that good stuff before starting the video, there is one thing about this map, and also just this game, Black Ops 4, that uh, I think Treyarch has not actually reached yet again, and that is atmosphere. I think that in terms of how COD Zombies has progressed over the last several years, I think the last time we had such a phenomenal atmosphere was Black Ops 4. I think we have really peaked with, uh, with atmosphere and with storytelling environmentally at least. Um, you know, as you go forwards into further games with Cold War and whatever, you kind of see how attention to detail has dropped. And I think it's only natural. Um, companies are naturally spending a lot less money on those kinds of things, because why put all this time and effort? I'm going to go back and get a gun. Why put all this time and effort, actually, into creating a quality product when you could just create some skins and make $20 per person per skin and make a few million dollars on a Nicki Minaj skin that you add into the latest Call of Duty? See, this right here... This was this was phenomenal. Look at the atmosphere here. We got Brutus doing his thing. We got a whole bunch of dogs and stuff spawning in. It's very cool, very spooky. Things crumble down. Um, this kind of atmosphere really was not seen in games following this, and even in maps following this. But that kind of makes sense. The on-disc maps are usually the ones that have all the the bells and whistles, if you know what I'm saying. Does anyone else remember how OP the dogs, and especially the tigers were? The tigers in 9, which we'll talk about later uh, on day 1. My goodness, I remember just getting absolutely roasted. Okay, so we've done a little bit of an introduction as to what it is we're even doing here, but I guess now it's time to talk about why we're actually here, and that's because Black Ops 4 did not succeed. It quite explosively uh, failed and fell apart. And um, I think there's quite a few reasons for that. A couple of those, if we're talking about just Black Ops 4 as a whole, would be how this uh, this HUD that you can see right in front of me here with these gobble gums or sorry, elixirs on the side look quite uh, horrible and quite uh, disgusting, to say the least. Uh, they're just a big glob on the side of my screen uh, with a bunch of numbers on them, and it's just as bad on console. It's like in a weird gamepad shape. It just does not hit. It's a weird design choice. Let's just say Cold War didn't have my favorite HUD in the world, but my goodness, it was an upgrade from this. But here we are in Black Ops 4 playing Blood of the Dead. Again, probably the most anticipated map of all time um, and the biggest letdown of all time. And why is that? It's probably the Easter egg is the biggest downfall of this map because the atmosphere, as we've discussed, is phenomenal. The uh, gameplay is fine, but the Easter egg for this map, weirdly convoluted, weirdly over the top. Steps were just way too difficult and way too finicky. Like trying to keep certain ghosts alive and hitting them with your shield and finding one of like 57 bird locations around the map and just all these weird little silly steps that I just kind of don't understand why they even thought about doing that in the first place. It does just kind of seem like the whole map was a bit of an oversight. But I guess that brings us to one of the major flaws with the launch of Black Ops 4 in the, uh, the, the beginning and the whole reason that I think it had a major flaw big enough to destroy it. That flaw and that major failure, I think, is the fact that there was not one, not two, not three, 
but four round-based zombies maps on launch, which, you know, sounds like a dream come true, right? Well, that's what we all thought on launch as well. We thought, oh my gosh, there are four maps for us to play with. This is going to be phenomenal. And I think that's probably what Treyarch was thinking as well. But, you know, the benefit of hindsight tells us that uh, having one or two, preferably two, maps for the community to dedicate their time and effort into actually is a perfect balance. It's a really nice way for uh, the community to kind of band together and uh, play a map together. And then if we all get sick and tired of one map, we move on to the next one. And it just is a much better balance. It doesn't overwhelm everyone and it doesn't have Treyarch put themselves in a predicament where there's too many baskets, not enough eggs, if you catch my drift. Also, I never understood this. Why cover up parts of the map that were initially part of the original? Like, I get you're doing a remake, but I feel like the remake shouldn't detract anything from the original. It should only add to the original. I feel like that makes sense, but maybe that's just me. Mr. Warden himself. Let's give him a few whacks with our katana. Alright, there we go. The man is down. We grab that key in just a second. Just want to make sure we survive to grab the key. Don't want to move on to the next map too quickly. And I think that's the thing about Black Ops 4 that I have found personally, is that it really does grow on you. I need to put the power on. How do I do that again? Oh no. It's fine. Everything's fine. Alright. Oh my gosh. No chill from these guys, eh? There we go. That's how you turn the power on. Far out. Oh, look who it is. We just killed one of you. He seems like he's a bit of an easier one to kill, though. Oh, yeah, he went down a lot faster. Probably not going to be doing too much on each map, because I do want to get to at least the four launch maps that came with this game, if we're going to be talking about uh, Black Ops 4, and especially its launch and its life cycle. Maybe one day I'll go and play the DLC maps. Um, so, hey, if you guys are enjoying this style of video, me just having a yarn while I play the game, then uh, give it a like, maybe subscribe. And uh, let me know if you want to see me muck around on the other maps that were part of the Black Ops 4 life cycle. But I at least want to, you know, get to the roof and pack a punch, maybe fill up some of the dogs or something like that. That's another thing that I just don't understand when it comes to the design of this map specifically. Less than the, the game Black Ops 4 itself, when it comes to this map, um, I do wonder why would you take away something as iconic as the Golden Gate Bridge? Um, as most of you will probably know, in the classic Mob of the Dead map, as you run around doing your thing, you collect plane parts, which take you to the Golden Gate Bridge. Um, you go and place them all. Oh, hello, that's a lot of zombos. You go and place them all uh, up here, where the plane would have been, but instead, in this game, there is just this little thing, which you've got to build the shield. I forgot about that part. You've got to build the shield, you've got to charge it up, you've got to zap it, and that spawns in the Pack-A-Punch machine. The only equipment you'll ever use is Wraith Fires, which are these little grenades here that I just picked up. And the reason for that is, is they're just so overpowered. Um, and I think they even might've gotten nerfed and they're still just ridiculously overpowered. So why use anything else if you're just gonna be absolutely killing it with the Wraith Fires? So we haven't found the shield part yet, but I think it would be disingenuous to not pick up the Tommy gun at some point because it is iconic. And it was one of the really cool parts of the original Mob of the Dead map. And I think a lot of people really loved this gun. Oh, hello, hello, hello. You guys need to take a shield pill, man. All right, we got one. And I feel like now, just as I've picked up my little perk, my quick revive, it's probably a good time to mention the perk system in Black Ops 4. We're really hitting all the notes here on the first map. But the perk system is a classic case of if it ain't broke, don't try and fix it. And I do think that Treyarch really shot themselves in the foot by trying to fix a system that was not broken. There was nothing wrong with the perk system in Black Ops 3, Black Ops 2, and the reason they decided to fix it is because they didn't like that people were buying the same perks over and over again. That was another thing as well. Uh, in Black Ops 4, if you ever got yourself into a sticky situation, uh, you would instantly be able to get out of it with the press of a button, that being your specialist weapon. It was, uh, it was a little bit ridiculous. And, I mean, some would say that this katana is the best one, but honestly, they're all fantastic. None of them are bad by any means. Hey, there it is. The one spot I did not check, but that is okay. A-OK, -okay, some would say. So I'll probably just head to the roof and that'll be how we end the Blood of the Dead experience. Uh, we'll be moving on to another map. Maybe a chaos map. Maybe we'll just do both ether in a row. Oh, goodness. If we can survive, of course, that is. It's fine, it's fine. I play video games. And there we go. We now have the spectral shield. And so we'll get up to the roof. I'll do some... Ethereal sucking of the zombies, if you will. Again, 
the atmosphere in this map is probably unparalleled full stop. I don't think there's a single zombies map that even comes close to this atmosphere. Alrighty, so things did just get a little uh, less simple, as now we have to uh, fight off a Brutus, but that is okay, we should be alright. Alrighty, so, go ahead and uh, whip out the shield, plonk in the key, give it a Spirit Blast, and they carry the Pack-a-Punch over, which I think is quite cool. Shove that in there. What is he doing back? I just killed you, buddy. That's right, we'll kill you again. Oh, this is not good. I am... Okay, we're fine. I really cornered myself there for a second, but hey, here we are. We've got ourselves a pack-a-punched weapon. And uh, something different about Black Ops 4 is that when you pack-a-punch your weapon the first time, uh, and actually the second, third, and fourth times, it's not until the very last one that you actually get a fully pack-a-punched weapon. Which, you know, it's Treyarch's solution to double tap, but I do think it was quite a flawed solution to a uh, problem that didn't really exist. I don't think players wanting double tap every game is really a problem. It just shows that you've made a good perk. And probably my least favorite system in this map, personally, is the fact that the Pack-a-Punch gets taken away by the ghosts and it moves down to the opposite side of the map. The issue with that is because they are on opposite sides of the map and there is no particularly fast way to get there. There is a fast travel, but it's not very good uh, because there is no particularly fast way to get there. If you run to the wrong Pack-a-Punch, you now have to trek it across the map to get to the other one. Not to mention there is absolutely no indicator as to where the Pack-a-Punch is. You know how there is a mystery box light up in the air that tells you, oh, hey, look, the mystery box is here. None of that for the Pack-a-Punch on this map, unfortunately. It's, it's very interesting. But that pretty much brings us to the end of our time on Blood of the Dead. So I'm probably going to load up one of the other maps now. It'll be a mystery as to which one it is. And I'll uh, see you guys there. The one is dead. And so we have arrived onto Voyage of Despair, a.k.a. the Titanic. Man, we want to talk about Spectacle. This map also had the secret source when it came to Spectacle. Did it have much else going for it though? Definitely not, but we'll dive into that in just a minute. In a similar vein to the Blood of the Dead story, there was a lot of hype and anticipation for this very zombies map. I also remember at the reveal seeing Voyage of Despair, aka the Titanic map being announced and Treyarch talking so fondly about it. They were so excited about this map that they had created. And so in turn, because they were excited, I was excited. I think it was a lot of fun to get caught up in the idea and the possibilities of what a Black Ops zombies experience inside of the Titanic could actually look like. And in reality, they did a phenomenal job with recreating the Titanic. Like, I don't think you could actually remake a zombified Titanic any better than Treyarch has done here. I think in terms of what they set out to do, they succeeded. Um, but I think it falls into the same trap as just the entirety of Black Ops 4, which is as a zombies mode, it failed at the fundamentals. The only thing it's really carried over from the previous zombies experiences uh, in games before Black Ops 4 is the fact that you kill zombies and round go up. Everything else was for some reason changed. And the absolute pity of Black Ops 4 is it's not this map's fault. It's not this map's fault that it is in a game with terrible mechanics. Kind of like Blood of the Dead, I do think if this map was in Black Ops 3 Zombies, I think it would have been received decently well. I think there still would have been the same complaints about cramped corridors and nothing being identifiable, and so you kind of never knew where you were on the map. There we go, using elixirs. And I guess that's a system we could talk about now, now that I've used one. The Elixir system is a part of Black Ops 4. It was not a part of any other uh, Call of Duty Zombies before it. There was, of course, the Gobblegum system, which is a little bit different, but it is kind of similar. But with the Gobblegum system, you would pick five Gobblegums and you'd bring them into any map and then you would get them out the machine and it would be random which Gobblegum you got. And that was kind of the end of it. Uh, there were some very overpowered ones, but it didn't really matter too much because you still had to like roll the correct one um, don't get me wrong, it was still busted, but it was less busted than just clicking a button on my keyboard and getting the perfect uh, gobblegum for the situation I was in. Here we are in Black Ops 4, and there is the Elixir system, which is just 
worse in every way. Goodness me, there are just some weird choices that were made in this game as a whole. Now, I do feel like I'm probably going to have a similar conundrum on this map where I don't quite remember where the shield parts are, but I'll have a look around. I'm sure I'll find them somewhere. That's right, I need to find the Sentinel Artifact, which is right up here. And so I guess I should probably talk about the Chaos storyline, one of the other big flaws of Black Ops 4. We're here with the Sentinel Artifact, which is kind of like a linchpin to the existence of the Chaos storyline. So Treyarch decided with the release of Black Ops 4 that they would not uh, continue the Aether storyline on its own, but they would also introduce an entirely new storyline alongside it, which was in itself an interesting choice, I do think. I have always thought to myself, I don't understand why they didn't just do the first four maps as Aether, uh, finish up the storyline, and then do the second set of four maps, because there's eight maps in Black Ops 4. I don't know why they didn't do four and four. Um, four Chaos maps to just, or four Aether maps to wrap up the story day one, because they released four maps day one, which is wild, and then uh, four maps to introduce and tell the beginnings of the story of the Chaos crew. I really don't understand why they didn't do that. I don't think we'll ever know. I don't think we'll ever understand why they decided to try and shoehorn two storylines into one game. But the thing about the Chaos story is, it was actually really well done. It was really compelling. There were lots of cool characters. The main characters are great. Um, I, for, for one, love a lot of the main characters in the Chaos crew. I'm playing as Bruno right now, and he's a lot of fun, especially with some of the twists and turns that happen later. But man, it was a, it was a cool time. But unfortunately, there was just so much ick around Black Ops 4 from the get-go, that I just don't think there was any time for it to recover. I might try and spin the box a few times in hopes of getting the Wonder Weapon, because you bet I'm not doing the quest to get the Wonder Weapon. I do appreciate that there are terrible guns in this game, which you might be like, what do you mean by that? Uh, in the later Call of Duties, particularly ones like Cold War, there are no bad guns. Every gun is extremely viable, every gun is good. Um, yes, there are ones that are standouts, and there are guns that are really, really good compared to just good ones. But the fact that every gun is at least good is a bit of an L in my opinion. You know, ultimately, the more I'm here playing this map right now, the more I'm here playing Black Ops 4 Zombies, I really do enjoy it. It really is good, and it really is unfortunate how badly it got shafted by the community. For good reason, don't get me wrong, it kind of deserved all the hate and criticism it got because it was really doing some silly billy things on launch, um, especially the crashing. Oh my gosh, we haven't even talked about the crashing yet. For those of you who don't know, especially on console, uh, for the first probably like few weeks of this game being out, uh, the game would constantly crash. It was uh, on the PS4 especially, it just was not having a good time and uh, that made it a lot less enjoyable for a lot of people, which is again, totally understandable. One of the other things that was brand new to the Chaos storyline specifically are the Catalyst Zombies. So if I remember correctly, which I'm going to try my best to do, there was a electricity one, ice one, which kind of like buffed the zombies. There was a poison one, which I'm not really entirely sure what it does to this day. And then there was like a napalm one, which is just like the napalms of old. Here it is right there. If you give it a, a shoot, it explodes. We've got to drain this, if I remember correctly. Can I hit this? I can. So that's one pack-a-punch of four activated. Is that the drain? That's the drain. All right, good, good, good. We're draining the water, finally. So, if I can just take this to the other side of the map, we should be chilling. Nice. This was a pretty cool fast travel system, I will not lie. Look at that. All the way to the end. Very cool. Big fan of that. Big fan of just being able to send it to the other side of the map. Do I wish it just kind of sent me there and didn't take me on this weird, long-winded, like, teleport sequence? Yes. But, we'll take what we can get with, uh, good old Black Ops 4 zombies, hey? Pack-a-punch thing number two. Alrighty. Did I hear a stoker? Oh, yes, I did. Here's the Stoker. Give a good look at him. There he is. He was a bit of a throwaway boss. As you can see, he was not very uh, scary. You know, it's really weird. If you can see in the bottom left by my health, there was actually a armor system in Black Ops 4. Sorry, in Black Ops 4 that was tied directly to your specialist weapon, which was really weird. Hey, is that the Kraken? There we go, the Kraken. Quite a cool wonder weapon. Oh, and here's our friend. So, let's get on upstairs where it's nice and safe. So, the Kraken, you could use the elemental zombies around the map that show up in the Chaos storyline, and you could upgrade it into a ice fire 
acid or lightning variant, which, you know, had various uses. To be fair, they all kind of felt the same, which I think was a bit of a letdown with this Wonder Weapon specifically. Right, here's the Blight Father. He's a bit of an ugly guy, but we're going to go whack him with our lovely hammer. See if we can quickly pack a bunch of this before it gets taken away. There we go. Pack a bunch cracking on round 15. Very cool. So the base variant pack a bunch doesn't really do all too much. It does get quite powerful, as you can see there. Handles a blight father quite nicely. But um you know. It's just a cannon. But uh we are in round fifteen, so we're gonna clear round fifteen and then we will uh move on to another map. Dark matter has this cool effect where the guns get spiky, as you can see. The more kills you get, the spikier it gets. Uh, it's very cool. But we will uh we'll move on to other maps. And uh, which one is it going to be? Is it going to be classified or is it going to be nine? I guess you'll have to wait and see. And so this, of course, brings us to map number three, aka nine. Nine is by far my favorite map in all of Black Ops 4. There is something just so well done about this entire experience. Like, look at this. You spawn in, you're in a gladiatory arena, gladiatorial arena. I don't know how you say it, but you're in a big arena. It's awesome, and there are just these huge temples and statues dedicated to different gods. Um, and of course, there is a crowd, which is something pretty wild. There hasn't been many zombies maps where there are non-zombie related NPCs in large number. Um, and this is one of them, which is quite, quite cool. Yeah, this map as well is just so expertly designed. The way that everything flows together, the way that you will loop around like a figure eight, like you go around there and back to here and then around there and back to there, while then also having this underground section that is just so well designed. Nine is the absolute baby of Black Ops 4. It is the golden goose, the golden child. Um, it is the best map in Black Ops 4 by far, but of course unfortunately just like every other map in Black Ops 4 It is held back by the mechanics of Black Ops 4, which is a bit of a bummer But yeah nine is quite a unique map especially in just like design of how you even play the map in the first place Oh, here's a shield part lovely um, there's a lot of really cool differences in this compared to other maps of the past, which I'll try and show you in just a moment, but I lack anything to kill with. So let's go ahead and bang this gong here, summon a champion, and you might be like, whoa, what does that mean? Oh, well, these tigers, so I can probably grenade tigers, which is good. Couple more, very nice, pop, there we go, and here we have, well, it, it picked up automatically, but we have a lion's, a tiger's, head, which you'll see what they're used for later. Here's the thing, when it comes to Black Ops 4, I have a lot of issues, but I cannot help but play 9 with a smile on my face. So now we'll pop this bad boy to kill this bad boy right here. A gladiator, because what is a gladiatorial arena without a gladiator, am I right? And now we have another head. Hey, here it is, alright. Let's go ahead and grab a gun, grab a weapon. Hey! <laughs> Love that. We happen to get the Wonder Weapon first try. That is some YouTuber luck right there, if I do not, if I do say so myself. Uh, followed up by the worst weapon I probably could have gotten, so I take everything back. This right here is called the Death of Orion, which is a very cool Wonder Weapon. Um, slightly underpowered, unfortunately, but it is cool. And basically, it's like a Wonder Off. Zap them. They zap each other, um, but unlike the Wonder Wolf, it does not infinitely kill. So it's kind of just like a bad Wonder Wolf. As you see here, it didn't even kill these guys, and it's round four, which is a little bit ridiculous, if I do say so myself. Yeah, the detail in Black Ops 4 is just absolutely phenomenal. It is something special that we'll probably never experience this scale ever again. Although I will say Black Ops 6 looks like it's really hitting some notes, which I'm very excited about. Honestly, anything other than Vanguard, we will take. So, there's this center room, again, just like... How freaking amazing is this with the map on the roof and everything? It's just beautiful, this this map. And then you go ahead and you place the four heads on there. You do some killing. It's all well and good, all handy dandy. And then there is your Pack-a-Punch machine. Thankfully in this map, the Pack-a-Punch machine stays where it's supposed to go, uh, stays where it's supposed to be. It doesn't run away on us, which is lovely. So that's pretty much the gist of Nine, which is a fantastic map. We'll probably never know, by the way, why it was called Nine. I think people have theories, but I have no idea what those theories are. Um, but I will say one of the cool features in this map that I do think is 
overlooked a lot of the time is if you see right down at the bottom left by my health there is a little thumbs up that is nice and green so what that is is basically if you do good things throughout the map like killing lots of zombies without getting burnt by fire the crowd will actually give you a thumbs up and you see that crowd affinity item available what that means you'll see in just a moment you see that thing flying that just hit the floor over there you might have caught it the crowd actually throws you items, which is really cool. And so training out here in this nice open space is not only rewarding you because it's a nice open space that's super easy to train in, uh, compared to other areas of the map at least, but if you're doing well and you're not making silly mistakes, like walking through the fire and stuff like that, then your little thumbs up stays nice and thumbs up. I think that's such a cool little feature that often, again, gets overlooked by a lot of players. Another thing cool that you can do in this map, a little challenge system, there's four flags around this little area, and when you knife one, you get a little challenge, which I think is pretty cool. Oh, here we go. Because I didn't have a camo on this gun, this is the 9 camo, which I won't lie, is actually quite nice. I'll give them that. The 9 camo is pretty cool. That's kind of the gist of 9. It's, uh, it's quite a simple map, but it's also quite complex in ways. But it's simple in the sense of, like, it's a very good map to just set up nice and easily. Uh, get all your weapons and stuff sorted and then just be ready. You're just hanging out now I can just go to around a bajillion and not have to worry at all. Look at these tigers, bro Jumping in sync. I could happily play nine until round 50, but we should probably move on to the next map Let's try and uh, burn through this round. Oh also I didn't get to show you guys the brazen bull. So the brazen bull is a bit of a machine gun Which is pretty cool shoots a little flurry of bullets. I still think I'm a, a big uh, not enjoyer of the catalyst zombies in this game. I do think they take away more than they add. They make training a bit annoying. The blue ones especially because they just double the health of a zombie, which if you're in a really high round is just ridiculous. The more I look back on Black Ops 4, the longer it's been, as it's been nearly six years now, the more fond I am of the game, to be completely honest with you. Because look at this, right? If you think to yourself, if Black Ops 4 was to release right now, after Cold War, after Vanguard, after Modern Warfare 3, but before Black Ops 6, if we got Black Ops 4, I think we'd be pretty happy. Because even if we just think about features that they promised that never came to the game, there were supposed to be these whole challenge systems which came in like a really shallow form, there were supposed to be factions which were supposed to dictate the story going forwards and stuff like that, um, and give you new daily and weekly challenges to do as well. There was supposed to be a huge amount of custom mutations that were gonna be way more impactful than they ended up being. Uh, we'll go for a run up here and we'll use one of the traps on this bridge to off ourselves. I always loved doing that. I found it a lot of fun. And just like that, we are dead and we'll move on to the next map. But nine is one of my favorites. It's a phenomenal map and I just think it's a damn shame that it is stuck in the Black Ops 4 engine to be forever lost with Black Ops 4. But Onto the next map, the final map, which you will see very soon. And finally, the fourth and final map, or launch map, of Black Ops 4 Zombies. Here we have Classified. Now, Classified, another remake. Um, there is a bit of a trend with the Ether maps in Black Ops 4 being entirely remakes. There's actually not a single original map in uh, the Ether set of the Black Ops 4 uh, maps, which, you know... Um, a lot of people were upset about. I don't really mind because I think they were all changed enough to be somewhat unique. And then in a way as well, it really depends on the map. For example, I think Classified is a huge improvement where there is nothing really taken away except for the Pentagon Thief, which I am bummed about. I don't think they should have taken the Pentagon Thief away. But uh, there was so much cool stuff added in like an awesome little thing that I'll show you later on. I don't really want to spoil it in case you don't know what I'm talking about, but you'll find out. But Classified is a cool map. I do enjoy it. I think um, it's the most casual friendly of the maps. Uh, as you can see, dogs are spawning because I'm picking up parts. Uh, but it's the most casual friendly of the maps to arrive on launch. And probably in the entirety of the Black Ops 4 life cycle, it's probably the most casual friendly map. One of the most simple maps, which is not necessarily a bad thing, especially when there is a game full of such uh, over-the-top complexity like Black Ops 4. I think that is probably one of the reasons it suffered on launch as well. The game probably suffered a lot on launch because of uh, the game being really hard. Like, it was not easy for casual players. You know, Black Ops 4 was not too hard or anything like that. Um, it was a little difficult on launch with those Tigers, but we won't talk about those. Um, it alienated a lot of the casual fan base. It alienated a lot of people who didn't play Call of Duty Zombies a lot. They felt like Zombies was no longer for them, and you can't really blame them for that. The only one you can really blame for that are, of course, the 
developers, Treyarch, who went a little bit crazy on some of the design elements that they probably could have chilled out a little bit on, um, and it would have been just as good. Especially when you think about maps like Blood of the Dead, where everything is so difficult and overcomplicated. Maybe rather than focusing on what we didn't get, we can focus on what we did get, which is, of course, this map. And I think this map is really good. If anything, I think it's the most consistent ether map in terms of, like, it's just good all around. Of course, there is the shenanigans with the Easter egg. If you didn't know, there is no main quest Easter egg on this map. There is a cutscene, however, um, and so you might be thinking, wait a minute, how is there no main Easter egg quest, but there is a cutscene? And let me tell you, uh, the way that they managed to pull that one off is the way to get the ending cutscene and technically beat the map is to get to round 150, uh, which is no small feat. It uh, takes multiple, multiple hours. I think someone calculated like the fastest you can get to around 150 on this game, on this map, is like 18 hours or something, and that's using like glitches and all, and so this map's easter egg is just entirely unattainable to anyone who is not an absolute hardcore zombies fan. But yeah, so this is the bottom floor of 5. It's very cool. Yeah, 5 is such a simple map, and Classified follows that trend in the right way, which I do enjoy. But in terms of the Black Ops 4 gameplay, um, there's not much more for me to say on this one. This map, if anything, the simplicity of it really contrasts with the over-the-top mechanic based gameplay that is Black Ops 4. It's like this map could be served so much better if it was in a game like Black Ops 3 where things were just a little bit less convoluted. But yeah, power is on. Power is on, which is cool. And uh, that means we can start wandering into these rooms and looking for the parts that are lay around the map. Um, this was something funny that you could do in the original map back on Black Ops 1. I just ruined it, but you could kill the pig. Um, I just killed the pig by ray gunning him, but that's okay. Nonetheless, the pig is dead, um, and we can now move on. <laughs> we got ourselves the shield on round 8. That's a record for our playthroughs today. Oh, the Nova Crawlers. I forgot about them. I forgot about Nova Crawlers. Nova Crawlers were a cool addition in Black Ops 1. I think in Call of Duty Zombies in general, they have far overstayed their welcome. Um, which I think a lot of players would actually agree with me on that one. I think they get overused. As some of you can probably tell, my voice is deteriorating. Um, filming such a long video was probably not in my best interest, but here we are. Oh, there it is. We found it. There you go. All right, now up we go. We'll wait for this to change. Hey, go up here. And we will start activating DEFCON. DEFCON 4 and DEFCON 5. And so now, as you see, there's a little presidential head there that we can run into. And this is where, in the map 5, the original map, this is where the pack bunch would be. But as you can see, that has changed. There is but a part there now instead. Oh, wow. Interesting. What does this mean? Run back to this room out the back here that we were at before, which is also a new area, by the way. This area was not unlocked in the original 5. Again, I think they did a really good job with Classified of adding to the map. Rather than subtracting anything away, they added to it, which I think is an absolute win. Dying Wish is ironically a perk that they added in, because uh, they, they changed the perk system, right, which we touched on briefly before. They changed the perk system because they didn't want you grabbing the same four perks every time. But what they ended up doing was adding like 50 perks into the game and people picked the same four perks every time. Uh, and now you see, instead of this being a little face, it is... The pack up punch symbol, very cool. I wonder where it's going to take us. It takes us to Moon. Oh yeah, pretty cool, pretty cool. Um, so, those of you who don't know, this is the Zombies map Moon, which was from Black Ops 1, the same game as the original map 5. But this is the starting area of the map that takes you to the Moon. Something that I thoroughly enjoy is the Pack-a-Punch camo in this map. I think it's fantastic. As you can see it here on the ray gun, it's really cool. I think it's one of the best Pack-a-Punch camos they ever did. And we're going to do something illegal in just a moment, which is we're going to pop the Perkaholic. Oh wow. Very cool. So as you can see there, we've got not just the four perks that I bring with, but also six more, which is not the entire roster of perks in this game because there are an ungodly amount of perks in this game. Yeah, these specialist weapons were something else, hey? They were so weird. Like, I get the idea. I get the thought process. Just the execution was just horrible. You just have this overpowered weapon at all times. And so as we wrap up here, overall, the way I look at Black Ops 4, and I think the way that a lot of people look at Black Ops 4, is like, it would probably be the best Zombies experience ever if it was not made by Treyarch. Uh, so what I mean by that is it would be the best non-Treyarch 
zombies ever because it doesn't feel like Treyarch zombies. It feels like a knockoff. It feels a bit silly, a bit weird. It looks weird. The HUD is wrong. The perks are wrong. The only thing that really remains consistent with the other games is, of course, the storyline and the themes and the attention to detail, which was exceeded. I do love Black Ops 4. I'm a Black Ops 4 lover, enjoyer, and I think it's fantastic, but I do think that there was just so much that was mishandled in both the launch of the game, the design of the game, and so much more that really stopped this game from being anything more than a mid-entry in the franchise. But hey, if you've enjoyed this video, if you had fun listening to me ramble about Call of Duty Zombies and about Black Ops 4 specifically, you want to see me do more of this, maybe do a deep dive into all the games and all the maps and those kinds of things, then hey, I'd love to do that. This is probably going to be quite a long video. I really have no idea how long it's going to turn out after the edit. But um, I would also love to dive into the other Black Ops 4 maps. And so if that's something that interests you, then uh, feel free to give this a like. Maybe subscribe. Um, maybe even share it or something like that. Leave a comment saying why you love Black Ops 4 and I'm absolutely wrong about the state of it. Um, or agree with me. Whatever you want to do. I'm down to hear all of it. And so, hey, I uh, love you all and everyone who's been hanging out and subscribing and commenting on all the videos. You guys are the G's, the OG's. And hey, let's see if we can get this video to get us to 500 subscribers. I think that would be pretty damn cool. I'm going to love you guys and leave you guys now. I'm about to break a rule and hit round 17. Alrighty. Peace out.